everybody, welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Baja build, and we got ourselves an ACR Viper, the OG from 1999, but I chose this car for a very particular reason, and that reason is the engine. We are actually going to engine swap this, I don't have to, but I want to, because we have the TVR engine, which would technically fit, but we're going to go with this. <laughs> The 6.7 liter V8 turbo diesel from the Ford F450, if I believe. And then we're going to want some all-wheel drive. It actually, the, the engine actually lowers the PI, which is kind of crazy. But it is less powerful. It's all about torque for that engine. And I just wanted to give a diesel engine a go. And I thought, the Viper is the strangest vehicle you could ever imagine for a diesel engine. Why not go with that? There were some other good ones, like the... Um, I don't like that, I don't know why. The Corvette, the C5 and C6 both have the diesel engine option, but when you can go for a Viper, you go for a Viper. It's an amazing machine. It is heavy. When you drop it down to 3,400 pounds, it's still not crazy light. We do have big old tires though, which is nice. That's the main appeal of a Viper in this regard is the tire sizes are ginormous now we can't put the turbo on because that brings it up to 2,000 foot-pounds of torque a little too much for our for our course so we're just gonna put all the weight saving parts on yes there we go that's not weight saving perfect now if I do that that and then I go over to here for a drive line, yes. And then can I sneak anything else on like a bugger? I can. There we go. That's actually not bad in terms of statistics. 518 horsepower, 1150 foot pounds of torque, and 3200 pounds. It doesn't rev at all, so we'll see how that plays out. But the Viper may actually not be too bad. Maybe. Okay, we're here at our build series, race track, and um, I'm gonna be honest, for full disclosure, I had to put in a seven speed gearbox because from stock, or stock modified, I should say, it topped out at 81 miles an hour. With the gear ratios fully extended, it topped out at 130 miles an hour. So with this thing, it is now topping out at 137. And yes, there is so much torque, I can launch it in third gear from a standstill. Ooh, that's a lot of grip. That's good. Yeah, you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm already in seventh gear. I'm already in the fastest gear. And it's not really going that quick relative to other vehicles. It's not going to be a top speed car, that is for sure. But it has so much torque, I think it can, you know, get around that. It has massive tires and even massive amounts of torque. I mean, look at that. That's flat out through there without any problems. And then if we just line it up nicely... Yeah, 105. That's not lined up nicely. And we still made the checkpoint, even with a thing stuck in the wheel. Look at that. That's a stupid amount of grip, and it's really good under brakes, as we found out. There we go. I will say, working this gearbox is a massive pain, because you're constantly shifting. It's like you're a semi-truck driver, but you're in a Viper going through the desert. So they're exactly the same. <laughs> And then we brake. Yep, brakes are really good in this vehicle. Use the handbrake to get the rear end swung around. And then... Make it... Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing this is a fictional game, because otherwise we would have bent the chassis in half with that, a, you know, race car style chassis landing on a sand dune in the middle. Uh, would cause significant damage, I would imagine. But geez, I mean, it's like it's like a workout from the thumb. It's just shift gear, shift gear, shift gear, shift gear. Because B is my shift button and X is my downshift. Both of those are controlled by the thumb. It's just ridiculous working with the diesel. Yeah. 
No, I'm not the, it's not been the best run. It's not been very... It's been clean in the fact that I haven't missed any checkpoints or run too wide. But it also hasn't been a clean run in terms of actual lap speed. That so that might be a flat out corner in this. I do like that about a diesel though. You can downshift it in a third and leave it at that for the low speed hairpins because uh torque. Please make it nope. Nope. I bottomed out on the jump. Bottomed out on the jump. And I really that also doesn't help. Yeah, it's not a very quick car, not even 100 miles an hour over the line. But it's pretty good. That's not a bad first run. 236 on the first run is pretty terrible. Um, this could easily be in the top three. I can see that. I see it being the Bronco. Um, if, I, I'm just going to try and get a clean run. We're not going to run wide and really miss any checkpoints. We're not going to bottom out on the jump, hopefully, if I can get my gears right. We're just gonna try and be smooth, not push it quite so hard. We're gonna stick to launching in third, because that works really well. You get no wheel spin, and you still don't really have any missed acceleration. Like that, yep. There we go. And then you turn in. It gets a little, I guess it gets a little understeer. There's good turning initially, then it sort of drags itself out wide as you get on the power, but that is to be expected with these um, all-wheel drive vehicles. Use a little bit of the handbrake just to get it turned. There we go. That was actually a really good landing, and then we cut in. A little bit of handbrake here and there. Perfect. You're able to keep on the power, and you're able to get that front end turn. If you just hold the gas and then use the handbrake. And then we're just going to launch it towards the checkpoint. There we go. That was smooth. That is how you do that section. That is a smooth line through there. Then you break late. Get on the power through the corner. Nicely done. Flip that checkpoint and run wide. Chuck it in. Again, this thing can carry incredible speed. That's ridiculous. Okay. And then break. No, I got another steer. I don't think I'm going to be able to land this one nicely. We're going to give it a try. We did kind of land it nicely. It wasn't bad. It was not the worst landing I've ever had. I think it was better than the last one. Now you got on the brakes earlier there, nicely done. We're a little bit wide into the rocks, but again, that never costs us too much time. It's not the end-all, be-all of this thing. Carry the speed, carry the speed, carry the RPMs to this thing. It's not so important to carry the RPMs since it is just so powerful, but you do need to be at least in the right gear. So, you know, third gear, if you're in second gear, you're just buzzing the limiter. So, you want to keep it in third or fourth on those hairpins. And then you're pretty much set all the way up to blasting through 6th and then into 7th and back down into 6th. Probably gonna left it there. It's still ridiculously fast either way. Yep, that's a little too much. I try to do too many things at once. I try to hit the brake, hit the handbrake, and downshift, and I sort of fell over myself. Using a little bit of a wheelie there. Much better line. And we are much faster. That felt like a good run. It was a very good run. <laughs> that already puts it into fourth place. It beats the Bronco. It's four tenths of a second off the Celica. There we go. All right. Final run. Do or die. Can we get a podium? That was a pretty solid run. There's nothing much to improve on. I guess it's just being braver in this vehicle. Because it has the grip. It can carry the speed. If you just push it a little more like that, I carried five more miles an hour through there. And I think that's just going to be the theme for this run, is just carry as much speed brake as late as you bloody dare. Like that. Um, 
because I don't really know how to get more speed out of this vehicle, to be honest. That last one was pretty great. That's a little too wide out there, actually. I carry too much speed. That is a danger with this type of run when you're just going for it maximum speed is you do risk the uh, chance of overdriving the car and actually making yourself slower by carrying too much speed into a corner and running wide or something like that. Uh, should I, and that was a debate too. Should I have down, or should I have upshifted there? and Or should I have left it in sixth like I did? I don't know really. Or carrying good speed through that section anyway. On the here, we're flat out. We're gonna try and be a little smooth and tooth here, not trip over ourselves. There we go. And quickly shift it up into fifth. Yes, there we go. And then clip this. That gives us a nice run through there. Carry the speed. We're actually going to try and not slide around too much in this vehicle, especially on those 90 degree corners. I feel like that's unnecessary. I feel like it's just going to end up costing us time. Like, there we go. No silly side sections. This isn't Tokyo. Keep the sliding to a minimum and just don't keep the gear shifts constant at this rate. This is a pretty solid run. We're going to leave it in 6th through here. I'll learn my lesson. There we go. Flying out through that corner is not something that happens very often. Don't trip over ourselves. We didn't, but it wasn't the greatest exit either. I think it was better than last time, but not by much. And then turn in to account for the bump and the wheelie. There we go. And down to the 6th, maybe. There we go. That was great. Was it faster, though? It was. It was faster. We did it! We got a podium! We got a podium. It's slower than the Mercury. That did a 230.4. This did a 230.9. But it's faster than the Celica. It's faster than the Bronco. That was a pretty good run. I'm pretty pleased with that run, actually. It had the corner speed. That's where you got it from. You had the corner speed, and you just had to be braver. It worked. I shaved... God, eight tenths of a second off almost, just based on being braver through these corners. That is the key for the Viper. It helps a lot that the hairpins, which is, this track has four of them, pretty much. It helps in that case because you can just launch it from third gear, which none of the other vehicles can even think about. The thing has so much torque, you can get away with it. But at the same time, it does not have enough power, it does not have the same oomph out of those corners to compete with the Mercury, to compete with the Maserai. The Maserai is an oddity. That was just so smooth, even though I didn't like how it drove. It was fast, considerably faster, actually. Yeah, I like the Viper, even if it's a diesel. It's a weird vehicle to build, for sure. I wouldn't recommend building a diesel. It's a bit finicky, <laughs> especially when you're driving, you're constantly pressing X and B, X and B, X and B, X and B. But it can be pretty fast, and the podium is well and truly deserved, but that will be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.